Well, hello there, and welcome to a very goofy 8-bit version of World of Tanks. <laughs> they did this, uh, one of these silly events again, where they have all these 8-bit, you know, graphics, and which, and, you know, you have, like, last time they did it, they did it with Carl, and Carl was really fun, and now they've added, you know, three new tanks. We have the Polar Bear, the Arctic Fox, and the Mammoth. Uh, the polar bear being what I'm driving this time, and these three tanks ahead of me are all ar arctic foxes. And the arctic fox is a medium tank, the polar bear is a tank destroyer, and the mammoth is a heavy tank. And we'll see all three in this game. It's another one of these just kind of silly events. I, I haven't been keeping up very much with World of Tanks. I usually jump on and play a couple games and then get off, but... Um, it's one of these silly wintertime events, and yeah, honestly, this one was pretty fun. Uh, Carl was really, really fun, and now they've uh, sort of upped the ante and added more to it. And oh, hello! Enemy armor is damaged. He busted through the wall, and then all of a sudden, you know, <laughs> there I was. Now, in this little event, the tank destroyer does a, a lot, a lot of damage. The medium tank doesn't do a lot, but it's ultra quick, reloads really fast, and the heavy tank has like 5,000 HP and uh, shoots three shots instead of one. However, I, I just like the tank destroyer better. It just hits really hard. But I thought this was a fun little event, so I wanted to include it uh, before we get into sort of the War Thunder action. Because there's something I really do like about World Tanks is that they do or like war gaming rather do events like this like they did during the world cup they did the uh that soccer event which was pretty cool uh, and now you know they're doing this one for winter time i guess but we are delivering some high powered news to these fellas and these games always they always this was actually the longest game i played and it was only about th you know, less than three minutes. The, these little event games go really, really quick because the map isn't that big and everyone moves so fast, reloads so fast, they just kind of nuke each other. Oop, there's a mammoth. I think he's going to be our victim. Have some. There we go. And you can still ram in these things, which is nice. Take it. Get it. There we go. And the, other, the two other tanks have just pounded that guy to death show those bricks who's boss but it was a really really it's a really fun event if you haven't tried it i couldn't suggest it more i think because it's just it's a good way to not take anything seriously and just have some fun because i mean it's a rank one machine but i did um, four and a half thousand damage in it you know so, uh, wow you know op op no completely balanced it's it's french it's balanced don't worry but uh let's move on to some more thunder shall we and here's that War Thunder I said I was bringing. Now this is a uh, one of the. This is actually the Battle of the Ruhr uh, simulator event. I'm platooned up with uh, Crocodile Tears and Boudica. Boudica actually has his own YouTube channel. I'll link it in the description. Uh, it's. I like it. I like it a lot actually. I I, so I go over there and watch his videos. So, and I uh, know I think Phil actually. Uh, sort of stumbled upon his channel first and we both like his channel a lot so you know if you're interested I'll put the link down below but anyway we're three jumbos running around on the Eastern Europe map and we've kind of rolled into the city and are slowly kind of pushing through and clearing all the alleys and stuff and I'm just sort of following along and I'm here uh, my my job right now is just provide fire support since I'm not in the front, I'll just follow along, check corners, and you know distribute uh, high velocity good news when when needed. But this the event was really really fun, and I think the advantage of well, I think what I've come to realize is in this event the advantage is to go in the city because going in the city it just it takes away air power. It means that the enemy pilots have to be really, really good to find you and pinpoint you inside a city. So, it's just a generally a safer place to be. And I'm sure, I mean, if you don't watch uh, Jingle's videos, uh, he's been talking a lot about, just basically every single one of his War Thunder videos, has been talking about, or the ones that pertain to ground forces, have been talking about how 
this event, you know, sometimes there's too many planes, but it is good, but it is the right way to implement planes, if that makes any sense. And I totally agree. The, the issue I have is there's too many of them. There should be like a, a hard cap on uh, the number of planes like in a battle. Maybe, maybe even form like a little separate queue. And now one of my allies is about to get blindsided by that uh, Jagdpanzer IV, but I'm on the outside. So my first shot actually gets his driver and his uh, gunner, and then my next shot knocks him out. So I was in the right place at the right time for sure. But I think if it almost seems like you need to have a queue set up to where you have, let's say, 16, well, for ease of uh, discussion, let's say 15 on 15. That's what the queue wants. That's what MM wants to make. All right, so let's say, let's make it easy and say, you know, you have 10 tanks and five planes on both teams. Or that ratio, two to one ratio, basically, is what you're looking for. And the MM can... You know, make a eight on uh, let's see, an eight on eight game, where it's uh, I don't know, it just it, it, there's some leeway there. You get what I'm saying though, and kind of build it like that. But you will run into the issue of what if there's no one queuing for planes? You know, what if there's no one queuing in tanks? Well, no games are going to happen. But you know, it just you know, maybe some way of sort of figuring out the whole, you know, like eight Stukas versus, you know, ground force or eight Sturmovix versus ground forces. Because it does sort of take away it basically I mean it has the effect of pushing all the tanks to the city, which is really exciting gameplay and really exciting to be there. But it's just not I don't know, it just it doesn't seem right to me. But I'm sure we'll get it figured out. Uh the hardcore simulator battle is really a really really good uh it's a great idea and it can be something that's really really special oops can be really really special let me turn that off be really like a, i said like three times now be really really special if uh you know the ever so slightest tweakings are done you know primarily around aircraft because it's not that i don't like being bombed in in a simulator game it's i'm totally fine with being bombed because it just because I know it wasn't easy for the guy to do it. I tried bombing in. Uh, you saw a go I had in a simulator flying. And, yeah, I'm just, I'm not, I just, I'm really struggle with it. I'm not very good. I'm practicing, but I'm not very good. So, the difference is, though, in, like, realistic, you know, I can do that. In our, certainly in arcade, I can, I can bomb targets. Um, so, it just, it seems like, there needs to be some it seems like if you're going to be that powerful you need to have some sort of handicap and the skill cap is the handicap you know like uh, just being able to put the ordinance on target that's a pretty good skill cap in my opinion especially when it's that hard but um yeah the it's like but I don't this is where I struggle and that's why I'm sort of maybe not coming out with my words very easily is I like the idea of planes being present in a lot of the game modes if that makes any sense because War Thunder's big sticking point is that it's going to be combined arms you know eventually we'll have tanks interacting with uh, tanks and planes and then you know the sh ships off the coast are going to be interacting in some way I don't know how that one will work but it, it probably will be a thing so how do you, you have to, you can't just, you know, get rid of, oh, good thing I didn't keep moving forward. You can't just get rid of sort of the quintessential thing that War Thunder's going for, which is combined arms. However, you can't implement it in such a way where one of the three powers, or in this case two powers, is that much stronger than the others. Because to counter... I guess my biggest argument is to counter planes, usually effectively, a player in the, on the ground needs to be driving a uh, needs to be driving like a triple A gun or something with 50 caliber machine guns, something like that. To uh, for a plane to counter other planes, 
it doesn't necessarily need to be a fighter and even fighters can carry bombs so for example let's talk about a couple planes that come to mind the Sturmovik and the Thunderbolt or the P-51 both have all three have very strong ordnance capabilities P-51 less so, the lesser of the group but very strong ordnance and have you know machine guns and cannons and things like that the Thunderbolt and the uh, 51 have plenty of 50 cals and the IL-2 has you know some machine guns and then also 23 millimeter cannons so they can all deal with aerial threats fairly well but they don't compromise their ability to deal with ground threats you see what I'm saying uh, planes can shoot down other planes but also while carrying bombs to drop on players triple a trucks as a whole as a rule as a very general rule are significantly less effective against tanks than they are against aircraft and you know they're they're fairly they're pretty effective against aircraft they're just very minorly effective against tanks the key exceptions being like the zsu which is very very effective at dealing with tanks but then you have it, what appears to be like the American AAA and the German AAA, in my opinion, don't do tremendously well against tanks. You know, the for example, the Kugelblitz, if you catch the side at close range of a T-54, you can kill it. Uh, it has the penetration to do that, but at long range, no way. The ZSU being the prime example of an exception here, because it can penetrate like lots of things at range. But... But you see, but you see where I'm kind of going with this. It's not about. It's not that I don't want them in. It's just there needs to. It needs to be harder for a plane to attack a tank if it's going to maintain its uh, superiority over tanks. And now this, I felt pretty good about that. <laughs> Granted, it wasn't the most difficult thing you've ever seen done. Because uh, he was flying directly at me, and I just simply shot him in his cockpit with an APCR round. But even then, I had no idea where this guy was shooting me from. It's to my right. It's over there by where the flak truck was, but I just can't seem to find him. But I know he's over there. So, I hope they just kind of tweak the way that air powers... Uh, what's the word? Uh, implemented in ground forces because it's a great idea and it's kind of what in my opinion it's what makes war thunder different and have that extra element but at the same time you don't want to pollute the other elements by just to add this just so you can say that they interact when realistically the only interaction is that planes are bombing tanks and tanks are trying to shoot down planes but they just can't because i, I feel like you don't Ideally, I guess, you don't put any player in a situation where they're that, uh, they're in a position where they just can't defend themselves from one of the three branches, or in this case, two branches. I know that's probably going to be the case, because if every tank can shoot down planes very easily, then, and every plane can kill tanks very easily, it's just everyone's going to die. You know, there are tanks that are, you know, most tanks are very bad at dealing with planes, it's just it's just brought to a head in like realistic battle when planes can just drop bombs on lit up targets, you know. But anyway, um, I hope planes stay though. I just hope we find a different way of doing them. But I, and also ho I hope this uh, simulated the hardcore sim makes its way into the game as some type of game mode. Uh, that we can play more more often with certain tanks because there are tanks that are going to be really really good at it. Uh, long range sniping tanks are going to dominate. I feel like it's going to be very interesting. But anyway, uh, that'll be it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching. I've been Corny Swiss, and I'll see you next time.